Hi, I'm JM. Recently, the ringgit has fallen against the USD. Many netizens have voiced their displeasure and have assumed that today's economic slowdown arose from the government's weakness. Are these claims true? It cannot be emphasized enough that many people's lives were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We empathize with their unhappiness and the government is always concerned about their welfare. However, equating a country's performance with the foreign exchange rate alone is too subjective. We also need to consider other indicators when analyzing a country's economic strength comprehensively. While the whole world struggles with high inflation rates, the Malaysian government implemented various aids and subsidies. Check out these stats. Consumer Price Index CPI of the EU is 9%. USA, 9%. Thailand, 8%. Singapore, 7%. Philippines, 6%. Indonesia, 4%. China, 3%. While Malaysia's CPI is only 3%. This reveals that, compared to other countries, our subsidy strategy has proven to be effective, which explains why our inflation rate is still under control. Next. Our gross domestic product GDP for the second quarter increased by 8.9% compared to the same period last year, again exceeding forecast. Bank Negara Governor Tan Sri Noor Samsha said, although external demand may be hindered due to the slowing global economic growth, the national economy continues to benefit from rising domestic demand. Besides this, in July, our nation's unemployment rate dropped to 3.7%, the lowest since the COVID-19 pandemic began. Exports have continuously grown by double digits for 12 consecutive months. Foreign direct investment FDI for 2022 has also exceeded 800 billion ringgit. Meanwhile, FDI recorded in the second quarter was 836.2 billion ringgit, more than 24.1 billion ringgit compared to the first quarter. These macroeconomic indicators prove that our nation's economic foundation remains strong and foreign investors are confident about our nation's future. This shows that our country's direction is on the right path. It cannot be denied that the ringgit is weak. However, let's not forget that the US is always raising its interest rates causing the USD to strengthen. Coupled with the uncertain global situation, it can be said that the foreign exchange rates of all countries are facing pressure and challenges. Major currencies have also depreciated against the greenback. Indian rupee and Australian dollar have depreciated 7%. Thai baht has depreciated 8%. Chinese renminbi 9%. Filipino peso 11%. New Zealand dollar and euro 12%. Korean won 14%. UK pound sterling 15%. And Japanese yen 20%. The ringgit's performance is relatively good with a depreciation of only 7%. At the same time, the ringgit's exchange rate has climbed against many other currencies such as the euro, Korean won, Japanese yen, Taiwan dollar, Thailand baht, Philippine peso, and others. The depreciation of major currencies against the USD is a global issue and is likened as a double-edged sword. As Asia's leading exporter country, Malaysia also benefited positively from the effects of the ringgit's depreciation as our country's export products became more competitive. But at the same time, importers encounter unavoidable problems. Comprehending the situation faced by industry players in various sectors, the government will introduce a series of policies that care for the rakyat's welfare, alleviating the problems faced. Overall, Malaysia's economic fundamentals are still fortified and very resilient. With our diversified economy, our nation's main commodity, service and tourism sectors are on a solid recovery path, evidenced by the steady increase in exports volume and FDI. There are parties who deliberately negate our government's efforts to narrow and subjective narratives, but statistics don't lie. We need to be more objective and think independently without listening to only one side. What are your views regarding this topic? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm Jay Yang. see you again.